on the edge of Tokyo, and he turned around and he headed down. We were down to, going down the main street of this village. I'm still shooting at him. And he's. I, I knew he must be hurt badly because this airplane was their latest fighter, and, and it was supposed to be a lot faster than the helicopter. But he wasn't today. And uh, I made my last pass visit here like this, and he went around and I came back, and there was a big gully, more than a gully, it was less than a canyon, uh, maybe maybe 100 feet deep, and, uh, 100 yards or so wide, and, and uh, I was coming at him and he, and he ducked down in that gully, and I cut the corner short from him and gave him a uh, little burst and he turned, and he's down in the bottom of the gully, gully and he starts out the other side when I came in and I, I looked like I nailed him right to the wall. And I gave him a, a burst and he clunk and he hit right in the wall and stopped, stopped there. And I kept on going and I was, I, I knew I was well, in, well inside of the uh, coastline of Japan, <laughs> and I thought I got to get the hell out of here. And, I, and I, so I headed south, which I figured would take me out to Tokyo Bay, get me at least out over the water. And I finally got home. And I, uh, so I, I claimed that guy, and <coughs> had a, we had a, a, a historian that hangs around with the fighter races, um, comes to all of our meetings. <coughs> he lives in New York. Um, somebody over here? side of the hill and I sneaked on home. And then uh, real quick, what carrier is that that you're on right now? Essex. Essex, exactly. So you've got these brightly colored airplanes, right? Yellow and green? Our airplanes, <coughs> except for that, that particular launch, our airplanes were a standard dark blue top, light blue bottom. And for this operation, they painted the, the, the nose rim yellow, bright yellow. So if you saw that, you knew it was a friendly airplane. And this, oh, I was talking sure. about uh, uh, <coughs> uh, this historian came to me a couple of years ago, and he said, you know that airplane you shot down over near Tokyo? Uh, I said, yeah. He said, the Japanese think that was the one that he gave me the name of this Japanese ace. And he, he was found dead in one right about where you say you shot, shot this, this this um, Tojo down, but he was out flying a Tojo by himself when this happened. <coughs> so at least I had confirmation on that one. The first
first when I shot down, um, I say he was heading out this way. I, I just called it a, 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 a possible or a probable. I didn't know. I, he was he was hurt, but I don't know how badly. And my wingman, who was quite a ways behind me, uh, had more time to to look. He he said he saw him crash. So I got credit for two that day. I didn't. If I didn't see him, if I didn't see them crash, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, call him as a kill. And well, even with your conservative ranking, and that's exactly how it is, you really you're up around seven, you told me, and that puts you, sure there's guys with the hundreds and stuff, but that puts you up in the top tier of, of aces. What you get, especially for American Aces, five, even just five, five and a half, seven, that's a lot of this. And congratulations on taking care of yourself mainly. <laughs> well, the, 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 uh, the uh, I have proof to the same historian that the day I, I said I shot down that, uh, that, um, um, hemp, and I, I will, I shot up that, uh, that, that Zeke, where his landing gear fell down. I never, I didn't, I didn't call, call him as, as a shoot down, because I never saw him go down. And I thought, I, I, I said, uh, Possible that he didn't make it back, but but I didn't see him go down. And I did, of course, call for that that uh, that hemp, and he went in straight in. But um, the same historian that on had the history of all that that battle that he had gotten from a Japanese historian that he knew, and, and he told me about that, that, uh, that battle. And he said, the Japanese did not, did not acknowledge any of their Zeeks being shot down that day. And, uh, Said the only one, the only airplane they lost was one hemp, and I'm the only guy that shot at a hemp. I'm the only guy that saw one. So in all that battle that day, there was only one airplane that was shot down. And in in our, these guys came back that had that I had directed to go up and help the, the photo plane or the search plane. They came back and I'll have to review the book again, but I, I think they claimed um, amongst them something like 14 airplanes. But I'll check that out. I've got the I've got the cruise book upstairs that, that lists almost all of these things. But for them, they, some of some of the people claim two two or more airplanes that they shot down, but they didn't. The guy had come out of the clouds and, and attack attack our planes. Somebody shoot him and he'd go back and up in the clouds and then ah, I got him. And I'm not, I'm, I'm confident because that confirmed a lot of my suspicions that we, uh, we gave out medals to people for shooting down airplanes that, that just never happened. And I'm, uh, after 
watching that for the whole cruise, I'm confident that there are a hell of a lot of other airplanes from other by planes that shot down by other air, other air groups that that never got shot down either. Well, you were looking for action, Diz. Uh, maybe we'll wrap it up for lunch, but I do want to say one thing because you got so much more to tell, so much more of your life story. You're still a youngster now, <laughs> and. Uh, but uh, weren't you scared out there? Or were you, it sounds like you were just hungry for action. For me, I'd be, I don't know, I'd, I'd be pretty scared out there. I, I, I don't recall ever being scared. I, I, I enjoyed the combat. I, I, I felt that I could, I could shoot down any goddamn buddy that would stick around and, and fight me. I was that confident in my own abilities. I may have been overconfident, but and it may be a, may be fortunate that I didn't get to see all the action that I wanted. That, that when we got out there, that we got out there after the turkey shoot, and there wasn't anything to shoot at for about four or five months. Might see an occasional airplane. That's all. It was and after all this training, months and months of training, yeah. and just the whole works you've been through. Um, sure. Um, now, where did that confidence come from? I, I don't know if it was just you being young. You know, a lot of young people are very confident. But it sounds like maybe there was something in your childhood living out there in the gold country, or you say you were shooting grouse. And what, was there something in your childhood that made you strong or made you confident? Well, <coughs> I can't think of too much except I, I, I played football in, in junior college on a championship team. I played, I played both way ends, offense and defense. And I played all but all but something like 11 minutes of a of a 11 game out of 11 game schedule, and I I weighed 150 pounds, as tall as I am now, and I I, I was confident that I could take almost any 260 pound tackle and knock him on his back. Yes, yes. And I was, I, I, and I did it many times. The only guy that, that really <laughs> handled me was a, a guy that played for the Moffett Field Flyers. Okay. When the Army had the field. Sure. This guy was drafted. And I can't remember his name, but he was a, he was a, a tackle for the Washington Redskins. He was about six foot eight and weighed, oh, probably close to 300 pounds. And I remember hitting him as 